Hi, I am Gil Penalosa. I'm founder and chair of 880 Cities. I'm also former chair and ambassador to World Urban Parks. 880 Cities is a simple but powerful concept. What if everything that we did in our cities, the sidewalk, the crosswalk, the library, the restaurants, the buildings, everything had to be great for an eight-year-old and for an 80-year-old? then it would be good for everybody. We need to stop building our cities as if everybody was a 30-year-old and athletic and create great cities for all. Before immigrating to Canada, I was in Bogota in charge of parks and open streets and other activities. We built over 200 parks all over the city. I also took a small program, Ciclovia Open Streets, and we turned it into the world's largest pop-up park. Over the last 20 years, I have worked in over 400 cities all over the world. Sometimes when we talk about age-friendly spaces, we think only of the children, which is great. And actually we even think of children five to 15. Very often we forget these little kids from zero to five, but most often we forget the older adults. Even though we have doubled the life expectancy and we have not realized, I think that one of the biggest waste of resource that we have in the world are the older people. The older people have knowledge and have experience and are healthier and wealthier and they can be very active, but are, one, are some of the lowest users of parks. Across America, there was a study done by City Parks Alliance and the Rand Corporation where it shows that older adults are only 4% of the park users. Why? Usually because there is nothing in them to do. And it is not really rocket science. We need to do parks that have walking trails, that have benches, that have water fountains, that have restaurants, that have activities. And something that is critical is that it's not just about the infrastructure. It's not only the hardware. It's not about just doing the walking path, but it's organizing the walking groups. It's about software and hardware. Sometimes we say, oh, but I see people walking. Yes, we see the few that are walking, but we don't see the many that are not. And they're gonna come out if we have activities. And the benefits are amazing because when we have parks for older people, it's gonna be good for physical health. And that seems obvious, but it's also good for mental health. It's gonna be good for depression. It's gonna be good for anxiety, for having a happier and healthier life. It's also gonna be good for the environment. And we, we have a really good network. It's also be gonna be good because people are gonna to walk to the parks and it's gonna be a great asset to the community. People want to age in place. And part of aging in place is having parks within walking distance to where people live. As an example of the benefits of parks and public spaces, when we did the Ciclovia in Bogota, which is a simple concept, we open streets to people, close into cars on Sundays, and the magic happens. We get young and old and rich and poor. We get many, many old people, many elderly people that are many healthy and go there to run, to walk, to bike, and also others that are on a wheelchair or on a walker. You know, it shows that the streets are public spaces. They belong to everybody and they can have different uses according to the time of the day or the day of the week. Also, when I was working, for example, in Toyama, Japan, I found a fantastic program when they take older people with dementia to a park. Family members, instead of leaving them inside the house locked, no, they bring it out to the park, they are walk around the park, they go to work in their offices, they come back at noon for lunch, and if they don't find their family member, no problem, they have a bracelet with the GPS. And what are some of the benefits? That person with dementia is gonna be happier and also healthier. Every other day of being in nature, surrounded by nature, they double the anti-cancer cells. So it's good for physical and mental health, but among other things also, to live a healthier and happier life. Across America and around the world, we need to pay much more attention to the older people. Right now, 
we need to think that in just the last 150 years, we have doubled the life expectancy across the US. So we're living much longer, but the cities are not really that friendly. For example, everybody should have a park within walking distance. And very few cities do. Until recently, San Francisco was the only one, and now Boston. But for example, cities like Los Angeles, more than half of the citizens do not have a park within walking distance. And that is not only an issue for children, it's an issue also for adults, and very important for older adults. Older adults need the parks to be physically active. They need a park also for mental. Like one of the big issues is loneliness. People are very lonely. They might be living in a city with millions of people, but they are lonely. They need to be out. So one of the things to do it is not only the park. Sometimes I find that cities, it seems easier to find the millions to do the parks than the thousands to make it work. But in order to make it work, we need to find those thousands. We need to have the walking group. We need to have the knitting group. We need to have the Tai Chi. It's through activities that our people are gonna go. I'm very hopeful when I see cities like San Francisco where every single person, and of course every single older adult, has a park within a, in less than 10 minute walk. But then I go to other cities like Los Angeles where more than half of the citizens do not have a park within walking distance. And we need to change that immediately. In the next five years, every single city across America should have a park within walking distance. We need to have great parks and public spaces everywhere. In the cities of 5,000 people, or 500,000, or 5 million, everywhere we need it. Because in every one of those cities, people are living longer. In every one of those cities, we're going through huge crises. We're having public health crises, physical, mental, emotional. We're having climate change, and the symptoms are everywhere. We are living longer everywhere. So that is something that is very, very important. And this, everybody has to get involved. Of course, the local government, most important. I'm encouraged that there are many private sector organizations that are getting involved with parks. But the success of the private sector entities should not be an excuse for governments to think for a minute that the parks is a private sector issue. No, the parks is a public sector issue. Because if we have fantastic parks in our cities, small, medium, or large, we're gonna have cleaner air. We're gonna have less noise. We're gonna have healthier and happier citizens. We're gonna have less problems of mobility because we're gonna have parks within walking distance. So this is critical, that the governments place parks. We need to raise the level of awareness I see across America that the budget of police, for example, keeps going up year after year after year, and the budget for parks keeps coming down. Why? Because the police says, well, if you, don't, if you want to want more people dead, give me more budget. Well, actually, that's what we should do with parks. If you don't want more people dead, let's have more parks. Because beyond a certain level, you actually need to invest more in parks to get more bang for the money to have safer and, and better cities. For example, the small parks. In the small parks, sometimes cities say, should we have small or large parks? Well, in the small park, that's where we develop a sense of belonging. That's also where we meet our neighbors. So also we develop solidarity. If something is happening in my neighborhood and I know the neighbors, I go out and help. If I don't know anybody, I shut the door and stay inside. But in the small neighborhood park, I'm not gonna be able to play soccer or baseball, so I need the medium-sized parks or the large size, we're get, we can go canoeing. So every city really needs a city-wide park system with small, with medium, with large. We need to have also active recreation, such as soccer or baseball, but also we need passive. We need to be able to walk and just sit down, as, as, as smell the roses and chat with friends and socialize. So it has to be a network. So it is very important. But it's not just an issue of, of the government. I think we should have the parks almost like a three-legged stool. One of the legs is the elected officials at all levels, at the city, at the county, at the state, at the national. Another leg is the public sector staff, but not only parks people. Let's get involved public health and education and economic development. And the third leg is the community, is the volunteers, is the nonprofit organizations, is the universities, is the business people. And how to get all of them together by developing a sense of urgency. We have a huge problem. 20 years ago, we didn't have one single state in the US with more than 20% obesity. 
20 years ago. Today, we don't have any state with less than 20% obesity. And the issue of obesity is a huge crisis because this has to do with depression and anxiety and heart attacks and respiratory problems and many types of cancers. And this is something that we should easily be able to conquer and have people, again, physically active. I mean, the problem that people are living longer is not a health issue if people are healthy. And by being healthy, I talk a lot about walking. Walking is not about doing marathons. We only need to walk 30 minutes a day for five or more days a week. That's why we need those parts within walking distance. That's why we need also to be, to be able to have intergenerational activities, to be able to have the grandchildren and the children. We have developed with the ARP and 880 is a very useful tool for it to evaluate if a park is good or is not good. What are the activities? What are, are, are the amount of people coming? How is it used on the weekdays and on the weekends? How is it used in the summertime and in the wintertime? Because the parks is not just a summertime issue. We need to have the parks with great uses throughout the year. This has to be 52 weeks of the year. We have to do it on, use them on the weekdays, but also on the weekends. So it's about that and that tool that is free and is available to everybody through ARP livable communities is something that any Anyone, even without any experience, either in parks or in marketing, can use to evaluate and be able to tell their own city leaders and their own city administration how good or not good is their park and how can it be improved. We need to engage citizens to transform small or large parks. The small community parks that are underutilized, let's get them involved. Let's ask citizens what is it that they want to do. Sometimes I, we do community meetings and we ask them for impatience and orchids. What are the impatience? It's things that we can do now, in the next 12 months, that are low cost, low risk, but high visibility. It might be benches, it might be painting the playgrounds, it might be cutting the grass, it might be putting signs, but it's something that people are gonna notice that change is happening, and then you gain credibility and you're gonna be able to do bolder and more uh, costly uh, investments. So those are the impatience, and the orchids are things that you can do in years two to five. But part of it is, let's start with the low-hanging fruits. Sometimes people start with the most expensive, with the most difficult, and if that fails, then everything else fails. It is very important for governments in any size of city to engage the citizens on what is it that they're going to do in the parks. And that's one of the recommendations that we have in the toolbox that we develop between ARP and 880 cities. We need to engage the citizens. When there is not a park, the best way to go is with a blank page before we have done any drawing. Let's work with the citizens on the what. What is it that they want? Let's don't bring the signs already done where people feel they were not even taken into consideration. So on the what, the community is the experts. Let's honestly listen to everybody. And by listening, it's not just going to the park. Sometimes we go to the park and ask people, what is it that you want? Well, those people are already on the park. If we, we, we need to ask, is also the people that are not going to the parks. So let's go outside, let's go to the shopping centers, let's go to the senior centers, let's go to the uh, faith groups, and let's ask people where we are gonna have park users and non-park users, because it's very important to listen to the non-users, why is it that they are not using the parks, and how are we going to get them there? And part of getting the people to the parks is having fantastic as access. Access includes the site walks, includes the crosswalks. Let's keep in mind that every single trip to a park begins and ends by walking. We walk from the bus, we walk from the cars, we walk from the bicycles, we walk from our homes. So we need to have nice sidewalks and nice crosswalks and good ways to enter the park. And those parks need to be safe and enjoyable. So that is some of the things that we need. We need to engage. By the way, we don't have a park near the homes. Then we need to do something so that the older adults will have a place to go and be able to be physically active and to socialize and to engage. There might be a school. We need to open every single school across America. I've done a lot of work, for example, along the Rio Grande in Texas, where there's huge problems of poverty and almost all of the schools are shut down. They have a 10 foot high fence and at 4 p.m. they are locked. No, the schools should be community hubs. Who has done this school? schools 
the same people that have paid for the parks. It's the same taxpayer. So we should be much better at using everything that is public. The parks and the schools and the libraries and the streets and the sidewalks, everything really should be totally interwoven. And we need to facilitate for the older people also to help others, to facilitate if someone knows how to do Tai Chi, to do Tai Chi courses. Some other people to lead people on walking groups, to lead on knitting groups. Uh, sometimes the knitting, people could be knitting at home. Why is it that they go to the park to knit? to socialize, to be with others, the issues of loneliness. Those, these are some of the things why we need to have really great parks and public places. Also because the parks are fantastic equalizers. When we are in the parks and in the public places, everybody's equal. So we, we're, we're not worried about uh, their income or we're not so concerned about what they did or they did not do. It's about socializing and that fact of equalizer is something that is great. By the way, something that is very important, we're building children's parks all over the, all over the place. We need to work also on how to develop the intergenerational activity. In any children's playground, as important as having the swings or the slide, is to have a nice cozy area for the grandparents. Imagine the fantastic bonding of the grandfather or grandmother or great-great-grandfather. Now we're seeing three and four generations together walking with the grandchild to the park and being able to sit and to have a coffee or to read a book or to socialize with something. All of a the sudden, they're gonna, both are gonna enjoy the visit to the park. But if there's not a place to sit and socialize, in five minutes they're gonna be bored and they will wanna go home. I've seen places like in Charlotte, North Carolina, a small playground that is about the size of a tennis court where half of it was playground for children, the other one was playground for older people or adults in general, and it had a walking path around it. So it doesn't have to be a gigantic park. As I mentioned, it's about a system where we interconnect small, medium, and large that are gonna be good for everybody. One of the biggest challenges around developing parks it does sometimes decision makers think that parks is just an issue of fun and games. Of course, it's fun and games, but it's also much more. So my recommendation is the parks use them as a means because they are, what they are is a means. If you have really great parks, you are gonna have better mental health and physical health, and you're gonna have a better environment, and you're gonna have better economic development, and you're gonna have better mobility, and you're gonna have a more exciting city to stay. So one of the issues that cities today are trying to do is how to retain the best people, how to attract, and part of it is having a great parks. So we need to raise the level of awareness, we need to raise the level of priority. The park should be a top priority. I don't know, somehow, I see in many cities there is a pothole on the street and the city takes care of it. But when a park is broken, the city says, oh, go do some fundraising. Since when is it that a pothole on the street has a higher priority than the parks? So I would say as a priority, let's improve the parks that we have now. And then also let's do new ones. Let's have a park within a 10 minute walk everywhere in every urban area. More than 80 out of 100 citizens in America live in urban areas. All of them should have a park a park within a short walk. And last, let's work on the uses and the activities. It's not only about finding the millions to do the park, it's just the thousands to make it work. We need to have the move in the park. We need to have the Tai Chi. We need to have the walking group. We need to have the uses and the activities. Let's not focus so much on getting the millions to do the large, big parks, but let's focus on how to use them daily, on weekdays, on weekends, and so on. I wanna encourage everyone to be active, to take a step, to help out however you can. This is not a time for citizens to be spectators. Take action. For example, in aarp.org slash livable, they are fantastic tools, including the toolkit that we develop in combination 880 cities and AARP. But there are also many other tools. Let's keep in mind, just 150 years ago, the life expectancy in the US was less than 40 years. So, I mean, I would be dead by now. People were dying off because there was no clean water on sewage and vaccination. 
That was, what, but now what people are dying of is lifestyle related issues, is heart attacks, is respiratory problems, is depression, is anxiety. How are we gonna improve that lifestyle? It's through those tools. And it's not that hard. It's walking 30 minutes a day. It's having better parts. It's having better citizen engagement. So go to ARP. ARP has over 38 million members across the US. So each one of those are providing ideas, are providing examples of what works, also what doesn't work. And we can live a healthier and happier life everywhere.